Hello everyone, this is AP Chem FRQ number three. So this is a question that uh, starts off with a redox titration, which then begs the question, how do you do a redox reaction? Okay, so I'm gonna go through how to do the redox reaction. I'll try and move through it at a, at a reasonable pace. Uh, and then we're gonna do some application of that in the lab. Okay, we're gonna do a titration, and we're gonna look at some Beard's Law stuff. So uh, this particular one is a very, very common one. Do not be surprised if this comes up on an AP test. It says that iron two is added to permanganate. Uh, under a set of conditions. So part A says write out the balance reaction for that. So first of all, some of this stuff needs to be memorized. Okay, so you're not expected to be able to figure these out. Uh, permanganate under acidic conditions always turns into MN2+. That's just something you need to know. The iron 2 can either become iron 3 or iron metal. Now because the permanganate is getting reduced, this needs to be oxidized. So this is going to become iron 3 in this case. So both of those products are things that you would just have to know. You would have to know that iron becomes iron 3 from iron 2. And permanganate becomes MN2 plus under a set of conditions. Under basic, it becomes MNO2. Okay. So there's nothing, there's nothing predictable about that. That's something we found in the lab and you need to know. Now to balance this as is, is impossible. So what's important to know about a redox reaction is you also have other things present. So at the beginning of the problem, it says it's in acidic conditions. That means that you have water available because you're in solution. And it means you have H plus available because it's acidic. So I can add those two things in. But to balance this as this is not going to happen in any time frame today. So there's a structure to how to balance them that will balance every single atom and every single charge. And the charge is very difficult to do otherwise. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick out the two things that go together. So, so permanganate goes very well with MN2 plus. They both have manganese. And iron 2 and iron 3 also seem very similar. So I'm going to take just those two chemicals at a time, and I'm going to balance those. And I'm going to use these other things, the waters and the H pluses, and really you also have electrons available. Okay, because those are going to come from the other half reaction. So for this, I would start by adding four water molecules to this side. And what that does is it gives me my four oxygens to balance these four oxygens. And then the same thing over here, I would add eight H pluses, which gives me eight hydrogens to balance my eight hydrogens. Okay. Now if I look at that, every atom is balanced, but I have eight positive charges, a negative charge, and two plus charge. So the charges don't add up. I have a total of seven plus on this side. These eight pluses plus that one minus. And I only have two plus over here, so it's off by five. So when I add five electrons to this, that gives me five minus, eight plus, that's three plus, Minus one more is two plus. So now my charge is balanced. So this is my balanced reduction half reaction. Okay. Then, on this one, I'm already balanced. I just need an electron to balance the charge. Okay. Now the reason why we do that is because it's simple, and, and it's not so, so much simple, but it's, but it's something that will work every time, and it will give us the balanced reaction. The last thing that you need to remember, though, is that we're trying to balance the charge. So if I have extra electrons on one side and not the other, the charges won't balance when I recombine these two things. So I'm going to take everything in this bottom half reaction and multiply it by five. Five iron twos, five iron threes, and five electrons. Then when I recombine, I'll have five electrons as a reactant, five electrons as a product. Now those will then cancel from my equation. Now that's actually happening. I'm taking five electrons to react with eight H pluses and a permanganate to turn it into Mn2 plus for waters, and those five electrons are coming from the iron 2 becoming the iron 3. Okay? Well, the last thing I need to do here is just recombine everything. So I'm going to take my 8H pluses plus my permanganate plus my five iron 2s, and then that will turn into five iron 3s, a manganese 2 ion, and four water molecules. Okay, now if you go through the hydrogen, the oxygen, the manganese, the iron, those are all balanced. But what's important to look at as well is I have eight pluses minus one plus ten. So that would be a total of seventeen. And I have five three pluses, that's fifteen plus, and two plus. So a total of seventeen on both sides. So that is my balanced half reaction right there for permanganate and iron two under acidic conditions. So that's part A. Um, that's about it, okay? So from there, we're gonna do a chemical reaction with this. Uh, and we're actually gonna do some stoichiometry. So I'm gonna erase this top part. 
We'll leave the bottom there for my mole ratios. Okay, so there's my answer to A. And we're going to go ahead and go to part B. So part B is a titration. And what they like to do on titrations is they like to do, you know, do you really, can you, can you take a math problem and bring out of it simple things? Like, like how much did you add, how much did react, and how much was left over? So that's the case definitely here. So this says that I have 57.4 milliliters of this potassium permanganate, and I add it to an iron 2 containing compound. Okay, then I have an excess left over. Okay, so part one just says, what evidence would there be that you have an excess of this permanganate? So that's implying that you know that this thing is a purple color. So you would see a violet shade to your solution when you're done. Okay, now there's probably another answer about the iron 2. I'm going to leave that out. Iron 2 usually is green, iron 3 is usually a rusted yellow kind of color. Uh, but a lot of times when we do this reaction in the lab, we mask those colors by using a phosphoric acid solution. So I think the easiest answer here is just go straight to the permanganate and, and highlight that pinkish or violet color. Okay. So then part two starts to get into the numbers. Now, at the beginning it told you a set of numbers, then in part two it gives you a new set of numbers. Okay. So if I take both of those sets, the very beginning of the problem told me I had 57.4 milliliters, which is this many liters. Okay. And I had 0.0234 molar solution. When you multiply molarity times liters, it gives you moles. So this tells me that I had 0 0.00134 moles of this permanganate. Then it says after the reaction is over, you do an experiment and you find that you now have 0 0.0632 liters and you have 0 0.0082 molar concentration. Okay, so so distinguishing what these are, which we'll do in a second, is going to be the tricky part of this. Now if I multiply that out, it comes up to 0 0.000518 moles of permanganate. So now the question is, what are those numbers? You know, so so the, the, the idea is, is that this is how many moles of permanganate you began with, and then this is how much you end with. Okay, so the question says how much iron 2 is in the compound. So what that's implying is that you're going to have to subtract these to figure out how much permanganate reacted. Then you're going to have to apply that to your equation to figure out how much iron 2 you had to react with all of that. Okay, so when I subtract these, if I take this minus that, that will come out to 0 0.000826 moles of permanganate. So again, my three numbers, this is what I started with, this is what I end with, this is what I used. And that's going to be the number that gives me the amount of iron. Okay? So from there, I'm going to take that number and I'm going to multiply this by 5. So the reason why I'm multiplying that by 5 is because one of the permanganates reacts with five of the irons. So if that's how much permanganate reacted, then five times as much iron would have reacted. So my moles of iron reacting, this times five, is point. 0, 0, 4, 1, 2. And that would then be my answer to part B2. And that's how much iron 2 reacts. Now there's a lot involved in that question. Really, it probably should be broken down a couple steps further. But that's everything to it. Okay, and that's about as difficult as a stoichiometry problem can get, right? That, that covers, you know, your stoichiometry in addition to titration and a redox reaction. So you have a difficult balance to do, and then it analyzes, you know, before, after, and during the reaction, and then leave it all up to you to come up with that answer. So that's how you would do that, okay? Then uh, it gets into a Beer's Law question. So, so then it says, you know, after the experiment, um, or during the experiment, rather, they give you a set of absorbance values, and they say, draw where the unknown would be. So I'm going to scoot over for a second. So here's my absorbance graph. The blue circles are my standards. So they had a couple standards of 0 0.002, 0 0.005, 0 0.007, 0 0.010. So Beer's Law will give you a linear amount of increase in absorbance as your concentration goes up. So if you plot where your unknown is, that'll then tell you what the concentration is. Okay. So they're saying the unknown absorbance is solution B2. 
So the solution of B2 was the one that was after the reaction had been over. It was this 0 0.0082 molar. So the spot they would have found it would be at 0 0.0082 molar. So it would be just after this line here. So if we take that spot right up to here, and right here is where it intersects the graph. That's where my unknown is. Okay. So when they were doing this, they were taking these concentrations they knew, and they were getting the absorbance, a little under 0.3, a little under 0.6, a little under 0.9, a little under 1.2. Then they got one that said, okay, a little over 0.9. What's the concentration? And so they can then fit that to this, this curve very nicely. They say, okay, it's in between these two, and it's right here. So that would be the spot that you would put for that. And I think that's a great question um, if, you're, if you're working through, you know, how does that make sense? Okay. So then there's just two quick follow-up questions. Um, the first one says, the, the student had done this and they had accidentally rinsed out their burette with water and had a little water left over. How would this affect things? Okay. So this is a very common lab technique question. So for C1, okay, that's going to dilute your KMNO4. And the assumption here is that you made a mistake and you didn't know it. So you carried out the experiment unknowingly, you would, you would, you would run water through it and didn't know that it would have an effect on something. Okay. And then the second part says, explain how that's going to affect your calculations. Okay. And that's a tricky part. So, so the student in this will assume they started with more KMNO4 than they actually did. right? Because they added a certain volume of what they, thought, what they thought was this molarity. And it actually ended up being a smaller molarity, so they ended up fewer moles than what they would have thought. So they're overestimating the starting moles of KMNO4. Which means that their gap between the start and the end is bigger than it actually is. They think it's bigger than it actually is. So they thought they reacted more moles of permanganate than they did. That's going to tie back into the iron two because that's going to be you know five times that amount. So therefore, they're going to overestimate the amount of iron two that's present. So that's AP Chem FRQ three, and again, you know, there's a Google Doc link into all of these. So if you would like some more practice.